Hi. So I'm sure you're all aware of what prompted this video and that is the Yandere dev situation. And I don't think I really need to explain this, but if you happen to not know what is going on, basically the game developer behind the game Yandere Simulator has been exposed as a creep, degenerate, kumo, loser, etc, etc, etc. I think everything that's should have been said has been said. I don't really think I can add much to that situation regarding Yandere Dev, but it definitely did trigger something within me. That being the, the sh artists have to go through with when it comes to game developers um, and honestly just people in any sort of managerial positions to begin with. I myself am an artist and when I say artist I'm grouping in like voice actors and actresses, writers, developers. So yeah I'm using just artist as a general term like an umbrella term that encompasses everyone who produces some kind of creative outcome and that can be in pretty much any shape or form that you can imagine. So I myself am a visual artist, I do digital art primarily, I'm also an actress, I also do graphic design and also some music production. So I've had my fair share of experiences within this industry, albeit non that professional. It seems to me that game developers, when scouting out artists, they... I think the underlying issue is that game developers see artists as disposable. You know, one may not be performing well and... Bye! See you later! I can just find someone to replace you. And I think that is a great issue and maybe something that influences the mistreatment of their artists. Artists certainly are extremely undervalued within their respected industries, and as I said, they are treated as disposable flesh bots that don't have emotions, feelings, mouths to feed, and that their skills are just, you know, th they're amazing, but I don't really value them. I feel like there's this hierarchy of course, you know, you have your the manager and the game developer, like the head developer is usually at the top and then it just goes down, 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 and the others sit somewhere at the bottom where it's just... Even though argu arguably you are producing some of the most important elements of the game, there is just such a huge disparity between like the head game dev and your head visual artist and it doesn't really make sense to me. Like why? <laughs> and as you know, game devs usually seek out artists who aren't as experienced because, well, they don't have the experience, they don't know what rights they have, they don't know what they deserve. And I think another issue with artists is that because we live, we are within such a competitive industry, right? You want to take any, any opportunity you can get. And once you're chosen, you feel that, you have that feeling of like, oh, if I make one mistake, they can just kick me out and replace me with someone else, right? So I feel like this makes you bend over backwards for things that shouldn't be any of your business. You shouldn't have to worry about it. And I think that in order to counteract this, artists need to become more aware before they start their journey into this industry. I know myself, um, most of the professional settings I've been in has been relating to my acting because as an artist, I'm, I'm quite a control freak, so I always just did commissions. I've never worked a part of a team. But when it comes to acting, when I get a role, because that industry is so flipping competitive, you know, people are ready to throw hands at each other fighting for the roles, right? You want to be so perfect. You want to be so memorable, irreplaceable that the producers couldn't fathom to ever replace you or kick you off their team, right? Because you think, oh, but if I don't get this role, then another opportunity like this is never gonna 
gonna come to me ever again and it's so over bro i'm never gonna make it it's important to remember that this isn't true opportunities are abundant and if there's a will there is a way i genuinely believe that it, you may have periods of time where things are extremely slow and you aren't seeing any opportunities arise but don't let that discourage you just I know it's hard when you're relying on the monetary income, but I think that if you have the means to while you're not making a livable wage with your art that you get, at least if you're not studying a part-time job, a contractual work where you're guaranteed you have a guaranteed salary because the nature of freelance work is extremely volatile. You don't know what you're going to get month to month. It's different every time. And that's one thing that we need to be prepared for as artists. If you truly want to make it in this industry, you have to know that. And that's something I myself, I wouldn't consider that I've made it in this industry. I'm just starting as well. But it's been, I'm 21 years old now, you know, it's been years. I'm quite slow when it comes to that. I haven't made that much progress because I'm someone who likes to take their time just because I can't cope with too much change in too little of a time period, right? And I think that I'd like to give you guys some potential red flags to look out for before you take on a, on a job. First and foremost, if it sounds too good to be true, it is, most likely like 90% certain it is too good to be true. Don't fall for it. Secondly, you can usually see on a job listing if it seems dodgy. Personally, I find the way Yandere Dev went about finding people to work on the project to be extremely unprofessional. I think that it's good to use a uh, job listing websites, whatever site you think's best, and list the job that you are looking for. I think that working so closely with fans who you have no, you have no obligation to their, to their ID, any sort of official information about them they can just lie whereas when you're going through official websites that are designed to find freelancers that is less likely to happen and that same same goes for your artists out there i do not recommend going into discord servers looking for little indie projects because there is a risk factor there and you know i love supporting small creators but that is just the reality that you are putting yourself in a position where you are more likely to be taken advantage of unfortunately i'm just thinking of when it comes to acting like i go on star now and you see an abundance of voice acting roles i see a lot of game a lot of game developers looking for voice acting and now these roles aren't paid but you can see if they've post if they're a verified lister and you also get some information about who they are i don't think you can post under pseudonyms on that site second I, uh another tip is i would say is to make sure you do your research before you jump on board like a huge project that is going to take up a lot of your time make sure that you research this person as much as possible Make sure this person hasn't done any fishy things, and I know it can be hard, especially if, like, the person, for example, has rebranded and is now working under a completely new name. Sometimes these things are just out of our control, but try and be as assertive as possible when it comes to interacting with these game developers. Don't be afraid to ask them questions, and if you receive a bad response from the game developer, if you just are asking if something seems off, that is a good sign that you should back out right away and to cut off all contact immediately because a good-natured professional game developer will not react in that way to someone who has concerns. They will, a, a well-meaning 
professional game developer will address those concerns adequately and not react in a childish way. If someone is exhibiting childish behavior, that is a good sign they should not be developing a game with other people because there is a level of maturity required to do this task without complications. Ah, uh, now that I've sort of talked about the being an artist working with game developers in general, honestly, I myself choose not to. Unless it's someone I know very close and that I can genuinely trust, I can't see myself working with a game developer because I'm just... I feel like the expectation is too high for no pay, basically, because with indie games, most of them are on paid roles. Most game developers are not willing to pay artists anything. And that's fair enough, you know? It's not easy <laughs> to be a game developer either. And that's, this isn't a bag on them because I know not all game devs are the same, of course. I know a lot of game devs personally that are good people, not evil degenerates, right? And I'd also just like to say some thoughts about the Yandere dev situation. As I said, I feel like there's not much else that can be said. I feel like everything that's needed to be said has been said by other people 10 times over, right? But I wasn't that shocked when I found out about it. I've known about Yandere Simulator since about 2014, give or take. I don't know if that's correct. I remember being about 14 when I learned about it initially, but I can't say I'm surprised that that a grown man who made a game surrounding uh, teenagers in a school setting with heavily sexualized interactive elements is a creep. No, I, I, I can't say I was surprised, to be honest. But I just want to say to all the victims of Yandere Dev, I hope that it hasn't completely ruined your creative endeavors, future creative endeavors, and please don't let it demoralize you from further pursuing your careers because, as I said, there are good game developers out, um, out there, but unfortunately, there are many bad apples. And it seems a lot of you got into it when you were really young, so to other people, I'd say, like, avoid you, game developers. If you're over 18, why are you working with minors? Try not to. If they're, make sure they're at least 16 years old, you know? And even then, I'd be extremely cautious because most adolescents aren't mentally ready to take on that responsibility. And also just to all the other artists out there, please don't get all doomer about <laughs> the state of the world and the the uh, the games industry. There are a lot of good projects out there ready to have you on board, okay? They want you. But just be careful and don't work with creepy, weirdo, old men who make games about teenagers in, sec in compromised positions. Okay? Bye! So yeah, let me know if you've had any sort of bad experience within the industry, or a good one. I'd love to hear. Hello, newcomer. Welcome to the Yandere Simulator Discord server. What brings you here? Are you asked questions about how to play the game? Would you like to learn more about the game's lore? Or perhaps you have some fan fiction with us? Whatever you're interested in, we'll be sure. Oh, you're here for that. <sighs> well, okay. Yas Queen, Slate, that's my Vicky Girl Boss, Yas Queen. There. Are you happy now?